What is up everyone? I'm Art Edwards. It is the final week of the shortened high school football season. We're going to finish things off in style. That includes two main events, four undefeated teams, all of them among Oregon's best offenses and defenses. We start in West Lynn, the Lions hosting the Newburgh Tigers. The captains, uh, they meet on the field before the ball game in this one. First quarter, Newberg's quarterback, Levi Durrell, under pressure, barely gets the pass off, but he finds Sam Murphy in the corner of the end zone for the score. Wes Lynn, though, answers right back. Quarterback, Blake DeBisha takes a snap, fires it long. Nate Watt, great catch with a touchdown. West Lynn's defense would also do some work in this one. They would dominate the game. Third quarter, Gavin Haynes, he picks off the pass. And he sprints to pay dirt. That's a pick six. West Lynn cruises. 33 to seven final score. They finished the season undefeated, but both teams had excellent runs this year. In bizarre circumstances, everybody should be very, very proud. Sunset finally got a win over Jesuit last week, snapping a 26 game losing streak to the Crusaders. The Apollos looking to finish off the season unbeaten. But in their way tonight, another undefeated team. We're talking about Central Catholic. Let's head to Hillsboro for this ball game. The Central Catholic cheerleaders trying to get everybody fired up for the game. Those stand, fans in the stands. Rams opened up the scoring. Ellis Bynum streaks through the defense, gets to the sideline, goes 59 yards for the score. You know what? He ripped off an 80-yard touchdown run later on in this ball game. Sunset responded. They were able to take the lead in the second quarter of this with Caleb Kim. He punches it in for a yard out. Remember that name because he had a big game. Looked like Sunset had control of the ball game. It's Kim again. This is a really nice 35-yard scoring run to put the Apollos up 24-7 in the third quarter. But Central Catholic stormed back, and this game went into overtime. Sunset does get the winning score. It was Kim once again on a short touchdown, 38-31, to finish off the season at 6-0. Great game at Hillsborough Stadium. Another battle of the unbeaten teams in Salem tonight. Nate Garcia ran for five touchdowns as West Salem took down Sprague 35-21. The Titans finished the season at 6-0. You know what, Lake Oswego lost its first two games of the season to COVID protocols. One of those games was supposed to be against Tualatin. Well, they finally got into it this week. Jake Lang, he gets the scoring started for Lake Oswego with the power run on the quarterback keeper. 7-0 in the first quarter of this ball game. And then it's on to the second quarter. Gabe Olvera, he had a big game. Another great run. Look at that spin move. He finds the end zone for 35 yards out. 20-0. Lake O leads it. Olvera had four touchdown runs in this one. Late in the fourth quarter, Dwalton's Jackson Jones finds Peter Burke. That got the Timberwolves on the board, but it was too little, too late. Nice play, though. Lake O wins it. 36 to set in the final. Heading west over to Tiger, the Tigers hosting Clackamas to finish off the season. Tiger allowing fans in the stands for the very first time, and there you see him right there from Sky 8. We pick things up in the second quarter. Here's a senior memory. Hewitt Sullivan takes it, explodes into the secondary, and watch him walk the tightrope. Stays in bounds. He goes 65 yards for the score, gets into the end zone. Tiger ends the season with a strong 47-28 win. Century taking on Lincoln, Sky 8 on the scene in southwest Portland. Third quarter, Lincoln driving. Mario Ambrose rolls out, finds Justice Lowe free. He beats a couple of defenders to get into the end zone, good for 22 yards and six points. Lincoln pulls off kind of an upset in this one, 25-14, the final. Sky 8 over Franklin High School, the Lightning hosting Glencoe. Second quarter, Crimson tied up by seven and going for more. Royce Bossel throwing into the end zone. Zach Slotman makes the grab, but did he get his foot down? Well, let's look again. <laughs> yes, he did. Glencoe gets a 39-0 win to finish the season at 3-3. Three three. All right, we still have a lot more to go with Friday Night Flight. It has been a rough season for the Beaverton Beavers this year. Started the night with only one win. Well, they traveled down Farmington Road to meet Aloha. The team squared off in the home of the Warriors. The Warriors, though, they opened up the scoring. Logan Moore, he slams it into the end zone for the score. Man, that's a tough run right there. Aloha up 7-0. Beaverton, well, their offense did come to life. Jay Quater with a nice toss to Christian Gonzalez. That tied the game at 7. 
But you know what? It's that guy, Logan Moore, again for a Loa. Another short touchdown run to put the Warriors back up on top in this one. Loa pretty much put the game away with a great punt return much later in the game. Adrian Mashia Jr., he grabs the punt. He's at like the 30-yard line. Nobody touches him. Goes all the way in for the score. Aloha wins it 49-13, the final score. Sky 8's going to take us down south to Mountainside. The Grant General's paying a visit there. The Mavericks' defense, very, very strong in this one. They were able to keep the Generals bottled up for most of the game. A couple of serious-looking injuries, though, in this game slowed it way, way down. We hope that everyone is going to be okay. Mountainside's able to take the game 17-7, the final score. Both teams finished their seasons at 3-3. Three three. The 5A Wilsonville Wildcats, they are undefeated, and they have already beaten two 6A squads. Well, they were looking for a third win over a 6A team on the road at Barlow. The defenses would rule this game early. Second play of the game, the Wilsonville defenders stripped the ball. Colby Gunther comes up with it. Great memory for that senior right there. But a few plays later, well, Barlow, they return the favor. They get pressure on the quarterback. That's Jace Knapp getting hit, getting knocked around. There was a monster hit to force the fumble. It would be a back and forth game throughout, but Wilson was able to come up with a 24-20 win. Their third win over a 6A school this season. The Camby Coovers made that long trip down to Southern Oregon to take on the Crater Comets. I think I have a new favorite <laughs> mascot. That's the Comet. Look, his hair is on fire. Camby's defense came to play. First quarter, Keenan Brewer. He gets the pick, but he can't run because the knee was down. Later on, Zach Martell with a nice play fake. Kind of fools everybody out there on the field. Keeps the ball himself. But you know what? Crater was just a little bit too much in their home finale. The Comets take this one 20 to 14.